Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we're going to be taking a look at the all new Raspberry Pi 400. Now, if you're not familiar with this little unit, the Raspberry Pi Foundation recently released this and it's an all-in-one personal computer powered by the same CPU that's in the Raspberry Pi 4. Given it's a different stepping, and we do have a bit of an overclock right out of the box, the Pi 400 is actually sitting at 1.8 gigahertz as opposed to the 1.5 on the Raspberry Pi 4. But in the end, when it all comes down to it, basically what we have here is a keyboard with a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. The one we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the kit version. This goes for $100. It comes with the Pi 400, power supply, HDMI, micro SD, and a mouse for $100. And they also offer the Pi 400 standalone version with no extra accessories for $70. So like I mentioned, I'm super excited about the Pi 400. So in this video, we're going to do a quick unboxing. We're going to go over everything that comes with the kit, go over the specs, take a look at the unit. I want to get into some testing with the operating system itself, some emulation. We're going to do some thermal testing. And then by the end, we're going to do a quick teardown to see what's inside of this unit. So here it is, the Pi 400. At first glance, it looks just like the official Raspberry Pi keyboard, but when we turn it around, we have all of our ports. And by the way, this has all the ports that the Raspberry Pi 4 does, minus one USB 2.0 port, camera connector, and display connector, but we do have dual USB 3.0 and access to our 40 GPIO pins on the rear. And yeah, this is definitely a sleek little personal computer. So since I have the kit, I do have a couple extra accessories to take a look at. But like I mentioned, they do sell this as a standalone Pi 400. We have the power supply, 3 amp, 5 volt USB type C. We also get the official Raspberry Pi mouse, micro SD card reader. The card itself is already in the Pi 400 and it's a 16 gigabyte SAN disk. And they've also included the official Raspberry Pi user guide. And if you do end up picking up one of these kits and it comes with this book here, definitely take a look at it. Lots of great information in it. And I've personally learned a lot from it. And one last thing that is included with this kit, a micro HDMI cable to full size HDMI. So when you're looking at it from this side, it looks like a normal official Raspberry Pi keyboard until we move around to the back. Now this is where all the magic happens with the Pi 400. From the left to the right, we have our 40 GPIO pins. Now this is actually a little weird layout. It's kind of recessed inside of here, but it's still accessible. Next up, we have our micro SD card slot, dual micro HDMI ports, USB type C for powering the unit up, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, and gigabit ethernet. And when it comes to the specs of the Pi 400 for the CPU, we have the Broadcom BCM 2711. It's a quad core Cortex A72 CPU running at 1.8 gigahertz right out of the box. And I'm sure we can do some overclocking with this unit. Four gigs of LPDDR4 3200. Built-in dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, and Bluetooth 5.0. Setup on the Pi 400 is super simple, especially if you picked up the kit, because it already has the micro SD card pre-installed with Raspberry Pi OS. You're just going to plug in your HDMI, mouse, and power. And this is actually the first Raspberry Pi from the factory with a built-in power button, be it it is a two-key operation, function, and F10. And it also has a power LED indicator. So I'm going to go ahead and let this boot up. And on the initial boot up, you have to choose your language and connect to your Wi-Fi network if you're not using Ethernet. But I'm connected to my 5 gigahertz network and the unit feels pretty snappy. I mean, it feels just like Raspberry Pi 4. Now out of the box, this CPU is sitting at a higher clock speed than the Raspberry Pi 4. But in all actuality, you really won't notice it browsing around using the unit itself. But if we did run some benchmarks right now, this would outperform the Raspberry Pi 4 at the stock clocks. But we can always overclock the Raspberry Pi 4 and I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to overclock the Pi 400. So I'm just going to head over here to YouTube real quick and we'll check out some video playback right out of the box. I haven't changed anything at all. I haven't added any extra applications. I will be doing that in a second, but I just kind of wanted to get this stock experience out for you. So we'll head over here to Blender Spring. And I'm not going to up the resolution or anything like that. Now down the road, hopefully the Raspberry Pi does get some better video playback from YouTube. But at 480p and 720, the Pi 400 does a decent job with YouTube video playback. Now, when you start going up to 1080 and even 4K, it's really going to fall on its face. And that's how it's been for a while for the Raspberry Pi 4. But a unit like this is perfectly suited for light work. If you just use your computer to check your email, Facebook, and watch an occasional YouTube video here and there, you could use the Pi 400 or even a Raspberry Pi 4 for those everyday tasks. And just because we're here and it does come pre-installed, we'll go ahead and load up Minecraft. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 edition. I can go full screen if I want to, but I'm going to leave it just like this. I really want to get into some extra applications that you can install from Terminal. 
and I will get into that in just a second, but as you can see, I mean, Minecraft Raspberry Pi Edition is going to run fine on the Pi 400. We're working with the same chip that's in the Raspberry Pi 4, so anything that works on that should work really well on the Pi 400. So what I'm going to do now is install some of my favorite applications. We're going to test out some PC gaming like Half-Life. We're going to get into some emulation. I want to overclock this. We're going to run some thermal test and then we'll do a teardown. So everything's gone off without a hitch so far. I was able to install Pi apps with a few applications that I want to test out here. First up, let's get into a little bit of PC gaming and we're going to test out Half-Life. Now this actually doesn't run on ARM. This is using Box86 in the background. And I'm at the stock clocks here. We'll go with Half-Life. We should be able to run this at around 70 FPS. And I totally forgot that this doesn't carry my saves over from Steam on Windows, but uh, this is just the beginning here. I've done a full video on getting this up and running, and it runs just as well on the Pi 400 as it did on the Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 400 is also going to work great for emulation. It's going to perform just like the Raspberry Pi 4 does. And luckily, we do have a really good Dreamcast emulator that works on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is ReDream. So we can get full speed Dreamcast emulation out of this. And I just have a Bluetooth controller connected through Raspberry Pi OS. So the next thing I wanted to do was test out the thermals on the Pi 400. I personally use Stressberry. What this does is stresses out the CPU for 10 minutes straight, all four cores, and then by the end of these runs, I can actually create an easy to read graph. I've already run it at the stock clocks, which is 1.8, and it did an amazing job. With no active cooling, this is all passively cooled. And now I'm overclocked to 2.2 with a CPU overvoltage of 6. And I think the Pi 400 is also going to handle this. So as soon as I'm finished with the 2.2 gigahertz overclock test, I can create a quick chart and we can see how the thermals did at the stock clocks versus an overclock. And it did absolutely amazing at the stock clocks and even overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz. I would not be opposed to running this at 2.2 all the time. As you can see here, at the stock clocks, maximum we reached after 10 minutes was 53 degrees Celsius, and overclocked to 2.2, 57 degrees Celsius. This is actually beating out a lot of the passively cooled cases that I've tested on my channel for the Raspberry Pi 4, so cooling on this is definitely not an issue. Now, with seeing that great cooling performance of the Pi 400, I want to tear this down and see what they have in here. This has no external screws on it. It uses a clip system. And they are a bit tricky to get out, but I have this little plastic spudger here. And with a little bit of work, I should be able to unclip the top and the bottom here and get inside of this thing. And here it is. Looks like the keyboard is connected with the single ribbon cable here. And you might already notice it, but there's a massive heat shield here. Let me go ahead and pull this keyboard off. And basically, that's all it is, the keyboard itself. So yeah, this is why the Pi 40 stays so cool, even overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz. We have this massive heat shield slash heat sink here. It does have four screws in it, and it should pull right up off of the main board. So I'm going to grab my screwdriver and get this off. It's definitely a bit hard to pry off of here. I believe it's stuck to the heat sink with a thermal adhesive pad. And yeah, there it is. I mean, this is a lot of metal to cool that little CPU, so that's why we were getting really good temps. Like I said, I wouldn't mind running this at 2.2 all day long and not worrying about it overheating. That's a lot of metal for this thing. It's definitely using more metal than some of the cases that I've tested here. But this is it. This is the main board inside of the Pi 40. Again, no screws here. We have two clips and we should be able to slide this right out so we can take a closer look. And if you ever do take one of these apart, make sure you remove your micro SD card before you do it. I didn't and luckily I didn't break anything. But yeah, I think this is an ingenious design. And as you can see, they just didn't take a keyboard and throw a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. This is a totally custom PCB. So here's our CPU and RAM module, 4 gigs of DDR4, 3200, and the Broadcom BCM2711. And this CPU is actually a newer revision of the 2711, and I think that's why we were able to get a little bit of a higher overclock than we can on most Raspberry Pi 4s. But I would suspect that this will be the chip coming in the newer Pi 4s when they produce more.
So yeah, I love the layout of this new board. We have all the ports on one side, and I suspect that there will be some people out there that buy a Pi 400 and tear this right out to put it in one of their projects. But yeah, there's really not much to it. We have the main board, the bottom half of the shell, the heat sink slash heat shield, and the keyboard itself. And these just stack right on top of each other and clip together. And real quick, here's a size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the main board that comes in the Pi 400. So after spending a lot of time with the Pi 400, I'm a big fan of it. And I really do think it's worth $70 if you buy the standalone version. And if you don't already have everything to go with this, the micro HDMI, power supply, micro SD card, 100 bucks isn't looking bad either. This is an all-in-one personal PC, and if you do buy the kit, all you really need to do is add a monitor or a TV. Now, I know there are some people out there that aren't going to like the form factor of this, but keep in mind they're not going to stop making the Raspberry Pi 4, and I won't stop using the Raspberry Pi 4. But to tell you the truth, I will probably use this Pi 400 more than I will with a Raspberry Pi 4 when it doesn't come to projects. When I want to check out new desktop operating systems and things like that, I'll probably just grab the Pi 400. It doesn't offer the form factor or the versatility of a Raspberry Pi, so you might always want one of these on backup. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Definitely keep an eye out on the channel because I do have a couple more videos coming up with the Pi 400. I got some modification ideas that I want to get out of the way, and there's just a lot of stuff that I want to test with this new unit. So if there's anything specific you want to see running on the Pi 400, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.